Four years ago, Gareth Southgate took his England under-21 side to the Toulon tournament in France, where the young three Lions came fourth, losing a third-place playoff to Portugal. There were some exciting players in Southgate's 19-man squad, so let's take a look at who the current England manager picked and where they are now. Jack Butland, Stoke City Relegated this season with his beloved partners, Butland had been on loan in the championship ahead of the Toulon tournament, where he arrived in France as Gareth Southgate's number one. Sadly for Butland though, that isn't the case in Russia, with Jordan Pickford getting the nod. Jonathan Bond, Reading Jack Butland's deputy, Jonathan Bond was a Watford player four years ago, but spent most of his career at Vicarage Road out on loan, making just 22 league appearances for the Hornets. Now 25 years old, Bond is a Reading player, but spent last season on loan at Peterborough United in League One, where Bond is a million miles away from getting another phone call from Gareth Southgate. Tyus Browning, Everton Four years ago, Tyus Browning looked like another player who would glide through the Everton Academy and into the first team, but that hasn't been how it's worked out for the lad. Last season, Browning was on loan at Sunderland, where he hardly shone as the Black Cats dropped into League One, and I don't see any way he features in Marco Silva's plans at Goodison Park this time out. Eric Dyer, Tottenham During the 2014 Toulon tournament, Eric Dyer was yet to make his big move to the English shores, but Gareth Southgate still included him in his under-21 side, back when he was still considered a defender. Four years on and he's a key member of the senior squad, vying with Jordan Henderson for a place in the heart of England's midfield. Luke Garbus, Everton Left back is a problem position for Gareth Southgate nowadays, and his left back from four years ago is nowhere to be seen. Luke Garbutt is still contracted to Everton until 2020, but was told to find a new club by previous boss Sam Allardyce, and I imagine Marco Silva's stance will be fairly similar, just less covered in gravy. Michael Keane, Everton Another current Everton player who was at the Toulon tournament four years ago, and another who isn't at the World Cup in 2018, but at least Michael Keane was much closer than the rest of his teammates to going to the World Cup in Russia. However, Keane endured a fairly disappointing first season at Goodison Park, which ultimately cost him his place on the plane with the rest of Gareth Southgate's squad. A return to form this season though could see Keane get himself back in England contention. Liam Moore, Reading A name that was once somewhat highly rated in English football, Liam Moore is now solely a championship defender, playing in all 46 of Reading's championship outings last season, having helped them reach the playoff final the year before. Moore was actually a Leicester player when the Foxes won the Premier League title in 2016, but sadly for the centre-half, he didn't play a minute, so hasn't got a medal to show the grandkids. Brad Smith, Bournemouth Four years on from playing for England's under-21s, Brad Smith doesn't even consider himself as an English player anymore. Born in Penrith, Australia, Smith has since decided to represent the country of his birth, but that still didn't help him get a place at the World Cup, instead having to watch the Aussies from home. Ben Gibson, Middlesbrough had things gone a little bit differently, there's a very real chance that Ben Gibson could be at the World Cup right now. After a season in the Premier League with Borough, Gibson really turned heads and got himself in the Three Lions senior squad in March 2017. However, relegation in another year in the Championship saw Gibson move away from the international picture. Surely a Premier League move awaits Gibson this summer, and the Teesside can get his international aspirations back on track. Josh McEachern, Brentford if there was ever a man to suffer from overhyping, it's Josh McEachern. Formerly one of England's brightest prospects due to his passing ability, McEachern is still in the championship in 2018 and has been with Brentford for the past three years. I think it's safe to say that Josh McEachern will never be a senior England player. Nathan Redmond, Southampton Had he performed better for the Saints this season, Redmond could certainly have found himself going to the Russia this summer. Sadly, it was a rough year for the former Norwich winger, who managed just one Premier League goal, having made his England debut in March 2017 against Germany. Despite a plethora of competition, another bollocking from Pep Guardiola this season could maybe see Redmond add to his one cap over the next year or so. James Ward-Prowse, Southampton Just like Nathan Redmond, Ward-Prowse could have been at the World Cup had things gone a little differently for the centre midfielder. Southgate has a fair few options in the middle of the park, but Ward-Prowse was a favourite of his during his under-21 days, and we've already seen the England manager give Ward-Prowse an England debut. Now aged 23, Ward-Prowse will need to continue developing, but his style of play and relationship with Southgate means he will likely be an England player in years to come. Jordan Cousins, Queen's Park Rangers Another member of the 2014 Toulon tournament squad who was locked in the championship, Jordan Cousins has been at Loftus Road since 2016, finishing 16th in the championship last season. Jake Foster-Kasky, Charlton Athletic 
A Brighton Academy graduate, Jake Foster Kasky has never played higher than the Championship, but next season he'll be in League One once again, with the Addicts filling to venture through the playoffs last season. While Gareth Southgate is still familiar with a lot of the players he worked with at under-21 level, there are some whose phone numbers he probably got rid of a long time ago, and I imagine Jake Foster Kasky is one of them. Jordan Abita, Reading his career started at Reading and Jordan Abita is still there, still a one club man providing you ignore his loan spells away from the Medeski Stadium. He's another player who has never graced a Premier League pitch, let alone a senior England jersey. Solly March, Brighton Finally we have a Premier League player again and one who performed very well in his debut season in the top flight. A talented winger who didn't actually feature that prominently for the England youth sides, Solly March will still need to see a remarkable rise in form to get close to an England cap. Either that or a lot of wingers will need to get injured. Corley Woodrow, Fulham Ahead of the Toulon tournament, Corley Woodrow scored his first ever Premier League goal and looked like it was going to be the start of a promising career for the striker. He followed that up with two goals at the Toulon tournament, but since then he's never played in the Premier League and has spent the majority of his Fulham days out on loan. He's now entering the final year of his contract at Craven Cottage, but don't expect him to play a part in the top flight under Slavisa Jakanovic. Saido Berahino, Stoke City It's all went to proverbial shit for Saido Berahino over the past four years. In 2014 he was at West Brom, kicking off his Premier League career and finding the bat of the net on a regular basis. Fast forward four years and he's just been relegated to the Championship with Stoke City, he hasn't scored a goal for more than two years and he's been plagued with disciplinary issues. Where did it all go wrong? Probably dominoes. And finally, Harry Kane, Tottenham Four years ago, Harry Kane couldn't get on the score sheet of the Toulon tournament and in 2018, he's England captain, set to lift the trophy on July 12th after England have beaten whoever it is 3-0 in the World Cup final. It just sums up Kane's incredible rise, going from absolute zero to one of the finest strikers in world football. It's coming home, lads. So that's where England's 2014 Toulon tournament squad are now. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.